Pakistan attacked 11 Indian airfields along the western border on the 3rd of December 1971. A massive effort to split the war and gain a crucial bargaining chip. Pakistan's war plans were tactically brilliant but strategically disastrous. For India, the war on the western front was in a sense a territory holding operation. The Indian Navy delivered an unforgiving blow to Pakistan from the seas. 1971 war saw some of the most memorable armored and air attacks including the unforgettable Battle of Longewala. It was a split creek in the east but a very different story on India's western border. With the Indian Army's overwhelming strength and focus in the east, Pakistan quietly decided to invade from the other side. The defense of East Pakistan lies in the west, General Ayub Khan had once said. His successor and protege, General Yahya Khan, had chosen to fight by those very words. Pakistan's strategy in the western front was deceptively simple. Invade, take territory, and then use it to bargain for the end of aggressive hostilities in the east. What Pakistan hadn't accounted for were ill-equipped but inspired defenders on the Indian side. India's focus in 1971 was on East Pakistan, on the Western theatre. The focus was on a strategic defence. For Pakistan, the situation was quite different. For them, the defence of East Pakistan lay in West Pakistan. And they proposed to achieve this defence by carrying out preliminary operation by the holding troops. No one that time, at least at our level, in fighting level, the significance of the troops. But we did know that on the Indian side, the army was fairly thin. In fact, there was no formal division holding the border. The invading Pakistani forces were led by highly able commanders who simply happened to make a string of doomed decisions. Most notably, this included a massive failure of intelligence that hid Indian strike aircraft in the Longewala area, but also the decision to move tanks with no roof reconnaissance and mounting a tactical frontal assault with no engineer reconnaissance. The Battle of Longewala was to have been one of the principal entry points for Pakistan to carve out Indian territory and end the war. What it turned out to be was annihilation or recovery of 36 Pakistani tanks and the death of 200 Pakistani soldiers, a terrible psychological blow that Pakistan would never recover from. In the West, there was a defensive offensive strategy. So what we did was that we actually uh, carried out counter-air attacks against most of the Pakistani airfields in the West, because in Longewala, while our air could operate freely, and, and you know the kind of destruction that they caused to the Pak armor. But Pakistani Air Force, because they were not in that area. The hard truth, however, is that the lessons of the war in the West were bitter ones. For instance, India had completely failed to detect such a massive armored presence on the Pakistan side. The Battle of Longewala may have had one of the largest disproportionate tank casualties for one side in a single battle after World War II, according to one account. But operations in the West shook up the Indian establishment good and proper. By the evening, 21 tanks were knocked out and uh, uh, scores of vehicles were also uh, lying destroyed there. So, next day, as we know later, the Pakistanis started withdrawing after uh, getting so much of battery. It was 40 years ago that the Indian Army and the Indian Air Force delivered a shattering blow in one of the most decisive battles of the 1971 war. It wasn't far from here that the Battle of Longewala actually played out. It is one of the most memorable battles of the 1971 war and it is one that changed the tide of the war on the Western Front. But 40 years later, exercises like Subarshan Shakti prove that the Indian Army is still preparing for any sort of conventional battle with Pakistan. In the Thar Desert, with camera person Amit Kumar, Shiv Arood for headlines today.